Hello, we're here at Telecom One on One, a JSNA Power Networking event, and joining us today is Eric Contag, COO of GlobeNet. Eric, how are you doing today? Thank you very much, Amy. Do it good. How are you doing? Very good, thanks. So tell me, tell me a little bit about GlobeNet. GlobeNet is an international carrier's carrier. Uh, we own, own and operate the GlobeNet submarine cable system linking the United States with Bermuda, Brazil, Venezuela, and now with Colombia through terrestrial extensions. Uh, GlobeNet is a 100% owned um, subsidiary of OI. OI is Brazil's largest tele full service telecommunications provider and the largest telecom company in South America. And uh, do you have any news for us today? Aha, the, the question, right? <laughs> well, yes, uh, we are launching services as part of our strategic initiatives into northern Brazil via an international connection. Um, we are just about to officially launch our Manaus, our broadband services into Manaus. Manaus is the capital city of the Amazon. Um, it is really just smack in the middle next to the Amazon, to the Amazon River and it is being served today primarily by satellite services. So what we were able to do through our strategic partnerships is we're providing connectivity from our landing station in Venezuela through Cantavera, our strategic partner to the border of Brazil, then continuing over power lines with our Brazilian Electro Norte power, uh, partner. And over the last year, our parent company, OI, has built 750 kilometers of terrestrial fiber, allowing us to provide these services. Um, it, it is really a significant and a very important achievement for all of us involved. Um, I believe that it's based on the fact that true strategic partnerships do work. You have to embrace them. You have to work hard at them. Um, we are providing an essential service to a community of over two million people and a free trade zone for science, technology and industry. And it's been very difficult to reach Manaus. Uh, other Brazilian telecommunications carriers have tried through the Amazon, coming up from the south uh, towards Manaus, um, and it's quite difficult. You have to really pay attention to the environment. Um, whatever you do, you have to do it with minimal disruption, and you need to do it in such a way that you're really providing the highest quality of service. But I think at the end of the day, it's not only about the international service and the broadband services that you're providing to Manaus, but the benefits to the population, the people, the kids, the schools, government, hospitals, etc., that now will have modern communication services over this high-speed link. So besides offering these modern communications to hard-to-reach places like the Amazon, what other key dif differentiators uh, would you say GlobeNet has? Um, one of the biggest assets that GlobeNet has from uh, the architecture of our network is we're, we're the newest built network of our kind uh, in the Americas, and we have the lowest latency sub subsea cable system linking uh, the United States with Brazil. And I think that factor is absolutely critical, in particular for our financial institutions. Now, GlobeNet does not sell directly to end customers. We're definitely very, very focused and staying true to our neutral carrier's carrier approach. And I think that is very critical and very important because we don't want to compete with our own customers in providing these services. So we embrace alliances and we've embraced alliances with a series of, of uh, providers that focus in this market. At the end of the day, you need to be an expert in the markets you serve and the financial industry has a series of service providers, integrators, people that specialize in that market that have a contact with those people. And they're the ones that eventually or ultimately bundle our international services with other services offering end-to-end -end solutions to these financial companies. But what we are seeing is important is a trend. And uh, Brazil itself, the largest economy in, in South America, is growing tremendously. Part of the BRIC alliance, or BRICS now with South Africa included. Um, and there's an awful lot of interest to connect the uh, stock exchanges or the mercantile exchanges. So uh, we provide today, we have a financial vertical solution linking Bovespa with Wall Street and linking Bovespa with a mercantile exchange in, uh, in Chicago. Right. No? So besides uh, serving carriers who are catering to the financial industry, uh, what, other, uh, what other trends do you see coming up in 2011? More than only 2011, but I think 2011 is like, like the beginning almost of this, is video. Um, 
For, for many years we've been talking about video. Some markets that are perhaps a little bit more developed have already embraced video and, and companies similar to ours have even acquired companies that, that are looking at video. Um, if you believe what, what, let's say, some industry leaders like John Chambers from Cisco say or others, video is a new voice. And, and therefore, it, you're, you're seeing true applications, not just the homegrown movies, but true applications that re really utilize the power of video. Um, telepresence, for example. Um, it's the next generation of video conferencing, right? You really want to feel close to the people. And, and in order to get the quality that you're looking for, you need the bandwidth, you need the pipes, you need the low latency, right? Um, our parent company, OI, is official sponsor, telecommunications sponsor, for the upcoming World Cup uh, in, to be held in Rio in 2014. And we're going to be using the next three, three and a half years to really build out not only the terrestrial network and all the services that we have there, but also preparing the international network to be the conduit to, to that event. And the World Cup is larger than the Olympics to some extent. So for one month, you're fully concentrated in providing you know, the highest quality video services. Now, if, if you see what's been happening in that space, you know, we started to dibble with HD for a while and compression and et cetera. And if you look at the last World Cup in South Africa, the number of high definition video services that were used was staggering compared to what was done four years before, right? right? Now, in 2013, you have Copa, uh, uh, Copa Libertadores right before that, that is really looking at, is the infrastructure ready? It's like the, the, the pre-game party to some extent, right? right? So the infrastructure needs to be there. Um, and most, the traditional distribution method for video has been satellite. And it's still a phenomenal method to distribute. But the satellites are full. Uh, they were not all originally designed to do uncompressed high definition. There's no bandwidth available. And that basically means that a, a lot of the providers are looking at um, fiber-based um, services, in particular subsea-based services, to uh, aid them with video contribution. And that basically means that you take, you know, live the feeds in the different stadiums, send them to the International Broadcasting Center, and then you, you provide the content to the syndicated, um, you know, outlets that in, in turn, you know, go to the broadcast. Right. So it's that connection, it's that glue between those two networks that we're going to be providing for, for the World Cup. And then in 2016, of course, you've got the Olympics in Rio as well. Olympics and the World Cup. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, if you'd like to know more about this lowest latency submarine cable that connects the Americas, please visit globenet.net. Thank you.